Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful day today here in Southern Tennessee, and we're up here at the shed, and it feels really good to finally be done with school for the semester. It was my senior year of computer engineering, and classes just went really well, did awesome in all my classes, and all my computer engineering classes are done now. I just have a couple more classes to finish up in the summer. But after that, I'll be done, and we're just gonna be able to be doing this all the time for a little bit. So over the last couple of years, we've been converting this shed into a house, and we've come a long way with it. It's been pretty cool just seeing it all come together. And we've been building up this audience here on YouTube, and we have all you down in the comments, and that's just been awesome. And also recently we've gotten some press with Insider. A journalist from Business Insider, Sam, reached out to us and did a whole article on what we've been doing. And it was just really awesome to see that. And we got a lot of new people coming in for that. So if you saw that, welcome to the channel. So let's take some time to look at some things we do other than the shed and answer some questions and just talk about some of the plans that we have for the summer and the fall. So this is an example of something that we have to deal with all the time. This is a big pile of treetops and branches remaining from our poplar trees that we cut down that were blocking the power lines. And we've probably had to do 20 times the amount of piles like this before just from fallen trees. But this tree in particular is the one that we had Alan come out and we did sawmill on it. So I'll link that episode and we ended up using that lumber as board and batten siding for our new shed that we just built. So we're finishing that up now and now we just have to clean up the remains. So there's a wind advisory going on today, so we can't be doing a giant burn pile, but this barrel works really awesome because it has this hole at the bottom. So we, we pointed it so the air just scoops in there. And so everything you just throw in there just instantly goes up in flames. So this is the same poplar tree that we cut down and something kind of cool about it, there's a hole going straight through the middle of it. So it was rotting from the inside. So if we didn't cut it down, then it would have fallen on its own eventually and it wouldn't have been good. But this piece is kind of cool because it's the actual hinge that he cut and you can kind of see the cuts that he made when the tree came down. So it's kind of cool. And you can just see that there's a hole straight through it. <laughs> so we got all of our grass cut. This time of the year, the grass just grows so fast. So we got all that done. And we also dragged some more large logs from the same poplar tree. These aren't really that great of wood, but they will be some good pieces to test with when we get our sawmill. This tree was also a pecan tree that also got, got cut down and all of that. And I've also gotten really interested in mushrooms recently and it's just fun trying to identify them. And I think this is turkey tail. Lots of people make tea out of that. So I don't know, it's just kind of cool that it's just growing all over it. We've also gone out exploring just because we have all this property. We found oyster mushrooms and we're still on the hunt for some morels and chanterelles. So hopefully we can find those too. But let's go check out where we're gonna put our sawmill. So we're just about to place our order on our sawmill and it's gonna be pretty awesome. But we're thinking right here will be a good place to do it. So this is the same area that we did the sawmill last time we had Alan set up right here and so we're going to put our sawmill right here we're going to do a sawmill shed over it we're going to get rid of that and then that's all of our rock wool so we're going to be using that soon too but yeah we're trying to kind of design it in a really good way for efficiency and being able to load up logs easily 
and then we'll have our solar kiln here too. So that should be pretty awesome when we get it all set up. So this is another really beautiful part of our property. We call this the saddle. Um, we're right at the top of a hill right here and the hill just drops off over there and over there. And in the winter time, you can see right down the whole hill, but once summer comes around and stuff starts growing up, it really starts to take over. So this is kind of an example of some of the things we have to deal with. And right now it's just grass, it's just a field, but it's not long before shrubs start coming out. Those shrubs start becoming trees. And then of course, all these trees that are already here, vines start growing up with them, up on them. So we have to cut those down. And then, you know, when we get wind too, trees just start falling down like this. So we have this tree. That's another thing that we're gonna have to take care of. We also still have um, over here. This is what happens when you do a sawmill. So this is just all the remaining scrap pieces that we also have to do something with. And some of it can be used as firewood. Um, some of it we can salvage and do some stuff with, but if you just leave it sitting around, it just piles up and then the stuff grows around it. We got our big pile of brush hogs over here, so we'll hook those up. It, it's really not that bad to do that kind of thing if you do it regularly, but if you wait for too long, it's when it starts to become a problem. Dad was doing all this 20 years ago, and when we came back, when we started this project, the whole thing just grew up. It all became trees, and we basically had to start over. So we, we just wanna make sure that while we're doing this project, we're making sure that it doesn't get out of control. We've seen some comments asking about why we aren't just building the house full time. And a lot of the time we're up here, we're just doing stuff like that and it ends up taking a lot of time. But ultimately our goal isn't really to finish. It's just to have a fun time, clear the land, create a great place. And so we're just up here having fun every day, brush hogging, riding tractors, clipping vines, looking for mushrooms. It's just so fun up here. And it's just awesome that we've been able to do it. I like how Sage just follows us around everywhere. Was she in there? So this is another big tree that we cut down a while back. This was the 80 foot cherry tree uh, that we did a video on with Shannon. So I'll put a link to that. If you haven't seen that, you should definitely check that one out. Uh, but this is just another example of what happens uh, with these trees. This one was completely rotting on the inside and it was definitely gonna be a problem if it fell down because you know it was right here, 80 foot tree and that tr the shed isn't that far away. So. Definitely had the chance of falling on the shed, so we're glad we got it down. And so it has a hole in it right here, but we kind of think that this area right here still has a lot of usable wood. I mean, this thing is, this is a huge tree. There's no way you're moving that without <laughs> some kind of tractor or something. But um, so yeah, so this is another tree that we can experiment with. We can try to saw, saw it and see what we can get out of it. and. You know, it's cherry wood, so it's, it's good, good hard wood, so. And then over here we have our shed that we've been working on that we talked about in the last video that we'll be using to move some stuff into. This is what we ended up using that poplar for, and we did board and batten siding on it. And one of the great things about board and batten siding and why it was used historically other than looking cool is that you can just put up the lumber when it's green, put the pieces flush against each other, and then when the wood dries out, it'll shrink. And that's really what the batten's for, just to cover that small gap. So it, it'll probably shrink more, but this section right here, we did as a small experiment. We put one of the boards on backwards just to see what would happen with the cupping. It hasn't been that long since we did it. And this board that we put on backwards is already cupping out right here. This is kind of what ends up happening. And so now that we know, since we're doing board and batten siding also on the shed with the same wood, the actual tiny house. We want to make sure that we don't put any of the boards on backwards just so that we don't have anything happen like that. 
And so this shed is just really coming together. I think it looks really awesome with this little windowsill, but it just looks rustic and cool. Really like the way it turned out. And so also when I was doing school and finishing up, dad built a door for the shed with our neighbor Richard. And I think they did an awesome job on this. So this is just a really heavy door. <laughs> um, it takes multiple people to move it. Yeah, it turned out awesome. And I think we're probably gonna do something kind of similar to this for the door of our shed too. And so on the outside of the door, we did cedar. And this cedar was in a big pile of barn wood in our neighbor's barn. And it's probably around 60 years old, at least. Didn't clean it or anything, just put it straight on there. And so it just really has that awesome rustic look. And to go along with that, uh, we did the same bluing for the hardware. So it just looks all rustic and cool. And I really like the way it turned out. And then, so on the inside of the door, we also did, we did poplar. Um, from that same batch and so we're gonna be installing this soon and then after we do that We'll basically be done with the shed and we'll start moving some stuff in here clearing out some space in the shed and We'll be ready to start doing electrical in the shed All right, let's head into the bathroom so in the last episode, we started installing our plumbing and we got a lot of questions, but there was one question that we got over and over. And that was, why did you not install the plumbing through the studs? And so we did have a reason for that. The first reason was that this is an exterior wall. So we didn't want any chance of having pipes freeze in the future. So we just decided to put it on the outside of the wall and it really worked out because um, this is where the water comes in and all this pipe is underneath the stairs um, right here. This is the, the main cutoff valves. And so this continues on into the kitchen and then in the kitchen, all the plumbing will be behind cabinets or just behind the washer. And so by having the plumbing on the outside of the wall, and inside a cabinet, it really makes it easier if we ever have to change something in the future because we don't want to have to tear down a wall and just opening up a cabinet is a lot easier. But then coming in here, we'll have a toilet right here. And then we do have a small section where it could be in the room. So we'll just put a small cover. We might have a cabinet or something right here. And then once it comes around the corner, this is a interior wall. So we're not worried about it freezing right here. And we ran it through the wall right here. It splits off right here. That will go to our tankless water heater. And then the re remaining is just for a shower. And so we decided to just leave a little bit left over just to preserve our option for whatever we might do um, in the shower. But yeah, that's our plumbing. And it's really not that much. So it was a pretty simple thing to do. And so we also have our electrical boxes that we installed a few episodes ago. And one of the biggest holdups we've had recently is that we need to do our rough end electrical so that we can get that inspected. And then we'll be able to install our rock wool after all that's inspected and we'll have that. And then after all of our installation is done, it's pretty much just interior from there. Um, we have our sawmill on the way, so we'll, we'll be able to mill all of our siding for outside and then also mill a bunch of stuff for the interior too. So that should be really fun. And um, it's really not that far away. So we just have to finish up those last few things. And before we can do our electrical, we need to start cleaning some stuff up because we have a mess right now. So now we're just gonna start doing some cleaning and preparing to do our electrical. All right, so thank you again to all the new subscribers. And that's just been an update of some of the other things we've been working on other than just the shed. And next week, we're going to be back to work. Uh, we have my uncle, Matthew Danner, from the Will It Meet Code episode. And it's going to be his big return. And he's helping us do some rough and electrical. So got a little sneak peek here. So be looking forward to that next week. And I'll see you guys in the next video.